Today we're doing something super fun. This is the little pad of paper I got in the buy it, try it video. I will link that up in the corner. This is a Stonehenge Aqua 140 pound cold press, teeny tiny paper, and we are going to use every single sheet in here except for one. So stay tuned for a really fun and unique painting. The idea with this painting is to take all these small little pieces of paper stick them together like they're one big piece of paper and then separate them at the end and put them on a backing so that maybe it looks like a window or just kind of a unique style. So that's what we're doing. And I'm using this Tombow acid-free tape runner to put these all on my acrylic sheet so that they act like one single piece of paper. And you can see my reference photo there to the left and I'm just sketching it over onto my one piece of paper that is going to be separated into nine. This is a super fun idea. It got me really motivated, and I suggest you guys try it, especially if you have these little buy it, try it pads of paper that you don't know what to do with. This is a great idea. I am pulling out my core palette for this, and I showcased this exactly how I made it in my last video, so check that out. It'll be up in the link in the corner. I really love core paints. They're nice and vibrant, and they act pretty much like I would expect watercolor to act like. I have expectations and these meet them, so that's pretty nice. I had a little bit extra space down at the bottom that I didn't really anticipate in the beginning, so I just added some more foliage. And if I had to do it over again, I would scoot the entire truck down at least by another half inch, one inch or so, just to, I don't know, make it more like I was expecting it to be, I guess. But yeah, I wasn't going to redo the whole sketch, and I figured that I would make it pretty and it would still be fine. For the colors of the foliage, I basically just used sap green mixed with different amounts of the cadmium yellow primrose. I did add a little bit of green gold in there under the truck, but I ended up darkening that so much that it pretty well is obliterated. And I used a lot of cadmium red medium mixed with the burnt sienna, some of the Van Dyke brown, a little bit of the raw umber for the dark brown you see in the painting. And for the fun part, this old rusted out truck, that is the best thing to paint ever because you can use all your bright colors. And it kind of surprised me, the color I reached for the most was the cerulean blue. And I'm finding I'm using that color a lot. So that's kind of interesting. It's not a color that I would have chosen normally to put in my palette and I reach for it all the time. It is the next morning and you can see how this is peeling up from the acrylic block a little bit and this one's like completely coming up. So my permanent, my so-called permanent tape did not really stay. I think the water pulling on it was just too much so I'll put a clip in here. I noticed this last night and I put it under some heavy stuff. You'll see that here. I put my paintings under these really heavy objects here. This is actually full of stuff, really heavy like liquid stuff. This is full of DVDs and I can see that it still didn't press back down to the acrylic here very well because I realized this table is a little bit bowed. So, oops, oh well, we'll see what we can get done with it and hopefully we can finish the painting without them completely coming off of that board. So my debate right now is do I go ahead and pull these up and water the back of them because I noticed on these acrylic boards it's really cool if you put water on the back of your paper and then stick it down. It buckled way less and it's a really neat thing to do. So easy. So I might have to do that on at least a few of these. This one and this one because they're just coming right up. So we'll see. I don't know. But do you guys ever have this problem? I have to ask you. that I have a really hard time sleeping last night because I just wanted to get back to this painting and see how the paint flows across there and see how it's going to work when it's all finished and how it's going to look. Anyway. If you have that problem too, let me know below in the comments. I decided to go ahead and water the back of them, but this paper was so small that I ended up buckling the wrong way, so I had to water the tops of them as well. After I wet the back and the front of the paper for those three pieces that were falling off, I just put this piece of wood case on it to weight it down. And that was probably three or four minutes that I just let it sit on there. So that should do the trick and I should be able to work on this fairly okay. I hope, we'll see. I think if I had a piece of advice for anybody with watercolor, it would be you can go in way darker than you think initially. Just put in the darks, man, get it over with. And I know a lot of people say the opposite because you wanna be careful and do layers and blah, 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 but no, go for the darks. 
Even if you have a good watercolor brand that doesn't have a massive drying shift, it needs to be darker. <laughs> so put in your darks. Don't be afraid to do it and use all that pigment. It is so worth it. It just looks awesome in the end if you do that right. Now because the sketch and the painting took me over two hours and five minutes to do alone, it always seems like longer when I go out of the footage. I'm like, what? It was only two hours? Are you serious? It felt like all day. Any anyway, beside the point, you can't probably see, or maybe you can. I know I have this sped up a lot, but can you see how many layers I end up doing? Because I was too timid. I went in too light in the beginning, and I think you could really get away with going in darker sooner, but Maybe I'm wrong. I, there's some layers in the back of this truck that needed to be lighter. Some of the rust, like the paint has completely come off and stuff like that. Okay, sure, that needed to be lighter. But I had to go over things so many times, especially this section right here that I'm doing now. It never got dark enough until like the very, very end. So don't be afraid to use your darks. I just, I just can't express that enough. On another subject, I have a hard time with painting sometimes because we're really drawn to realism. Like, we want to paint something and see, did that turn out like it was supposed to? But part of me thinks, man, if you're going to paint something that looks just like the photograph, why don't you just use the photograph? Does anyone feel me here? I, I don't know. But anyway, painting this rusted truck was just right up my alley because I could use all these strange colors. And that's the kind of painting style that I want to do. That's why I did my golden retriever painting the way I did. And I'll link that up in the corner if you didn't see that. It's a really fun abstract painting of my golden retriever and a lot of abstract bizarre colors. And it's one of my favorites. So doing this kind of truck that's just rusted out, you could just choose whatever colors you want, was right up my alley. So here I have the painting in a finished state and I am trying all these different backgrounds. And in the end, I end up choosing white, which you'll see. But as I go back through the footage, I'm like, oh, I really liked that one. Oh, I really liked that one. Oh, I should have done the dark blue. Oh, darn it. But I chose the best I could at the time. And that's the one that won out. And so I don't know. Do I need to make prints of this and try to make backgrounds? Probably because I love it. One thing about this that I've been wanting to mention though, because I squished all the pieces of paper together and painted it that way as if it was a single sheet and then separated them, do you guys see right there in the headlight how when I separate them, that headlight just looks skewed? So in the future, if I did this again with a bunch of different pieces of paper, I might separate them at the very beginning and then the perspective will be completely right. It will be more like you're looking through a window without the skewedness of it. I wanted my painting to be very secure on this backing, so I used this archival tape. It's super strong stuff that scrapbookers use, and I had some in my stash, so I put it around the border of each little piece of paper and then one strip down the middle and stick it on very evenly. At least I try. All right, I finally have it taped onto my nine by 12 background. And I'm thinking maybe a weathered wood frame for it. So that's why I made it the nine by 12 because the nine by 12 frame is super easy to get. And even an extra mat, maybe with some of those other colors you saw me trying out would be kind of neat. There it is. I really like how this turned out. It's pretty. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. This was a really fun project. Like I said, I even got interrupted in my sleep wanting to come back to work on it. And if you liked it, make sure you hit the like button below. And if you like the content you see on my channel, consider subscribing and hit the bell for all notifications. Otherwise, YouTube will only tell you once in a blue moon when I upload something, which is such a bummer. And then I upload videos every Tuesday and Friday, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great week. Where'd he go? <laughs> there he is. <laughs>